the first thing on the agenda for Thursday was fixing the anti-roll bar on the Malibu. Let's see what he's broken now. I think what happened was the shock bottomed out on the anti-roll bar and snapped it off. Well, that sucks. So Jeremy disassembled it, cleaned all the parts up, and welded it back together. An easy fix. Put the wheel back on it, she's ready for more tearing up. Since the Malibu's due for an oil change, I figured it was a perfect opportunity to go ahead and drain the oil while it's up in the air. Thomas was here today. He was out back running his crawler around the creek bed for a little while, while the dogs are pinned up in the house and they won't bother him. Anyway, I figured out that I'm out of motor oil in the shop, so I decided to jump in the 64 and head down to Mark's to pick up a couple cases of Brad Penn 2050, some filters, and some shop supplies. We also need to change oil in the 64 because it hasn't had an oil change since, well, I don't know. The odometer doesn't work, so I really can't keep track of the mileage. Maybe someday I'll get the odometer and the speedometer fixed in the 64 if I find somebody else to maybe work on it. It's getting harder and harder to find good help these days, and that's something that I think Mark and I both share in common. Well, 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 look who it is. Yes, it's me. Captain Pink Eye. How was the rag shop? <laughs> <laughs> I was quarantined for the weekend. Oh. After the weekend, I got my privileges. I'm allowed back here now. You've been unbanished. Yes. I'm allowed back at work. So what have you screwed up today? Everything. We're getting interrogated. Oh. I need a couple cases of 2050 pin grade. I've got that in stock. And a couple filters. How about some rags? Oh, I know. You're a big rag salesman well, now. Well, I, I know you make a lot of messes. I know one thing. Thing 2 here was about to make a mess with those two cases of oil as he was going out the front door. I wasn't going to say a word. I thought about going out and just videoing it, but Mark spoke up and told him to tape the box up before he dumped it all over the gravel parking lot out front. If you've ever read Thing 1 and Thing 2 by Dr. Seuss, you'd get a pretty good idea what Mark deals with on a daily basis. Anyway, once we got that situation taken care of, he pulls out this alternator. That's for the Mustang? It is. 228. And of course, it came with explicit instructions for installation. An expert. We'll worry about that when we get the Mustang back from Jack's Wax next week. Right now, we've got our hands full with maintenance on not only the Malibu, but the 64 as well. Once we got the oil change done on the Malibu, I backed it outside and I decided I'd take Thomason out to lunch. Or I'd let him take me out to lunch, whichever way you want to look at it. Now that the shifter is solidly mounted to the floor, Tommy doesn't seem to mind driving. The engine in the Malibu is basically the engine that used to be in his S10 pickup truck. Everything is the same, with the exception of the hydraulic roller camshaft from Iski and the ATM carburetor. Although the engine seems to make about the same power, it definitely cruises better with the hydraulic roller from Iski. Plus, we never have to adjust valves. On our way back from lunch, Tommy asked if I could stop down at Mark's so he could pick up a few things he needs for his 92 Chevy short bed pickup truck project that he wants to try and work on a little bit this weekend. He needs a torch kit, hinge pins, and hinge pin bushings for the doors. We've stumped you on a torch kit. You've got the tank, but you've got no torch head. I think when you get stumped, you have to wear a coon hat. Really? Yeah. Oh. came from jimmydaleracing.com. Oh, that's, that's there you go, straight from Texas. Thomason dubs this the coon hat of shame. The coon hat of shame. No, I think all I your employees should wear these. Yeah, I can put that in the employee handbook. That's what they, right there. Right there. That's what he needs. No. It's in the employee handbook you wear it. I guess. Speaking of Uncle Jimmy Dale, he sent me a message while I was in there at Mark's. We've been called out. Uncle Jimmy Dale bet me 10 push-ups. Who's doing the push-ups? Well, whoever loses. I'll do the push-ups for you. You will? Yeah. Well, that'd be nice of you. But I'm not gonna lose. Grab my draggy. Let's go up here on the test spot road and go see who owes who some push-ups. What are the steps? The steps are motor pass, one burnout, and go. Hmm. All right. You in, June Pup? No, we're not getting that out, come on. I don't know what Jimmy Dale's up to with calling me out on a draggy run, but I can assure you, Jimmy Dale's 7.30 pass 
isn't going to put me in danger of doing any push-ups, especially since Tommy's willing to do them for me anyway. But that 199 60 foot doesn't scare me a bit. All I've got to do is let the Malibu leave gentle, and it'll put down a 150 to a 160 60 foot, even with June Pup riding in the back seat. So anyway, we head south out of town, out to our test spot road, where Billy and Tommy usually test the Falcon and the S10. Now, even though I'm pretty sure this road is significantly better than the road that Jimmy Dale made his pass on, I'm still going to allow the Malibu to leave nice and gentle. There's absolutely no reason to risk doing push-ups when all I got to do is do better than a 199 60 foot and a measly 736 out the back door. So what's the verdict? Jimmy Dale owes me 10 push-ups. <laughs> Good, because I don't know if I can do 10 push-ups. <laughs> So that brings us to Friday morning, and I need to go into Columbus to check up on the Mustang that I dropped off in there last week. Now, they've been working on this car since I dropped it off, trying to get this thing cleaned up, and I'm trying not to get my hopes up. I know Jack's Wax makes some incredible products, but this car is a complete disaster inside. And to be quite honest, the exterior isn't much better. So I point the Malibu towards John Glenn International Airport, where Jack's Wax is located just a few miles away. And this is where I get to introduce you to Zach Kopas, owner of Tidy Rides in Columbus, Ohio, a high-end detailing company that generally works on exotics. But the guys at Jack's Wax insisted if there was a detailing company in Columbus that could help me with this Mustang, it was definitely Zach Kopas at Tidy Rides. Zach not only plans to remove all the old window tint and clean the glass in preparation for new high-quality ceramic tint, but he's also going to remove the seats, detail the interior, and somehow clean what's left of the carpet in this car. Without question, the most difficult part of the interior was removing the old tent off the back glass without destroying the rear defroster built into the hatch. After just one day in the showroom at Jack's Wax, Zach has this Mustang looking like it actually belongs in the showroom. It's difficult to show just how bad the interior was in this Mustang until you look at the back glass and the side windows and then compare them to what they look like after Zach got done. I was actually told by multiple people that the rear hatch will not be salvageable. And I'm sure that was probably the case if it weren't for Zach Kopas, who absolutely has no quit in it. Anyway, the next phase of this project will be polishing the paint and then bringing in a paintless dent removal expert to remove as many dents and dings out of the body panels as humanly possible. They're also going to remove the black stripe and prepare the silver along the bottom of the car to be repainted once we get it back to the shop. After I got done visiting with Zach in at Jack's Wax and looking at the Mustang, I headed back to the shop to start getting the Malibu ready to go testing Saturday morning. It's been a couple of weeks since I had the car down in North Carolina, and I don't think I'm the only one that's got cabin fever and can't wait to get back out on the road. While Jeremy starts weighing nitrous bottles and filling them up, I head down to the local filling station to pick up a couple of gallons of 110 race gas for the standalone system in the Malibu. At this point, we're just a few hours away from having the car ready to load up in the trailer and tie it down. Well guys, it's Saturday morning and we were all loaded up and ready to go test today. And unfortunately that's not gonna happen. Last night, uh, just before I was getting ready to load the car up, I took the car around the block and uh, did a little test drive. I put it back on Ignite Red and swapped the carburetor on it, put the 950 back on it to get ready to go down and test. And something happened, I don't know what. Um, the engine was making a really bad noise. Um, completely unexpected, I'm dumbfounded. I, I don't know what happened. Uh, as you can see in the video, I've been driving the car on the interstate. I, it, it run perfect, it ran perfect until it didn't. And then all of a sudden it started making some terrible noises last night on this test drive around the block. 
and it drove itself home. It wasn't smoking out the breathers. It wasn't smoking out the exhaust. It had good oil pressure, but making a terrible, terrible, terrible noise. I'm afraid that maybe a, a valve broke. Uh, I don't know. We're gonna pull the engine out of it today and uh, get to the bottom of it, see what happened. I already called Uncle Bob and uh, he's aware of the situation and he said, get it up there. So here we go. Anyone who's ever lost an engine unexpectedly knows exactly what this feels like. It's like having the wind knocked out of you along with a severe case of anxiety. I go over and over the last few seconds of this engine's life in my head and I can only come up with two explanations that make any sense. There had to have been something let go in the valve train, a keeper, a retainer, or maybe the head of the valve broke off, or there could have possibly been something in the secondary side of the carburetor that I didn't see. Maybe a socket or something fell down in the carburetor while I wasn't looking. I don't know. But once we pulled the engine out of the car and went to pull the intake manifold off, I realized very quickly what had happened. A valve keeper had broken, allowing the intake valve to drop down and hit the piston and likely destroyed both cylinder heads and possibly even the entire short block. All right, guys, so we've got one cylinder head off of it and it's definitely got one cylinder wall. It's just tore all to pieces. Uh, it didn't crack the block, but it may have to be sleeved. I don't know if 40 over will fix it or not. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and pull this other head off because we've got another damaged cylinder on the other side. I think pieces of the intake valve came up through the intake and down in number eight intake runner and tore up number eight piston as well. Now this block is actually a Speedmaster Extreme Duty steel billet main cap block. The bore size is already 4155, so the block's 30 over from standard bore. 40 over being 10 thousandths larger likely isn't going to save it, so we're probably going to have to go 60 over if we want to reuse this block, and that may be a problem. I won't know until I get everything apart and get it up to Bob's so he can check it out. Once we had the engine all tore apart, I called up there to see if he was available, and Bob's actually working in the shop today, dyno in a big block Chevy for another customer. So Kenny and I went ahead and loaded everything in the back of the 64, and Vicky got ready to ride up there with me once we pushed the Malibu back in the shop and closed up everything for the afternoon. It's about a 45 minute drive from our house up through Utica to Bob's shop near Mount Vernon and I had a pit in my stomach all the way there, concerned whether or not we could save this block one more time. Ever since I introduced Bob to Tim Neely at PRI with ATM carburetors, they've been working closely back and forth for new carburetor combinations on Bob's dyno up at the shop, which is why Bob was available today for me to drop this block off to him. Bob took time away from his dyno work to come out and look at the block for me, and he has the same concerns about the bores as I do. But he's gonna do the absolute best he can to try and save this block and get this thing back together for me so I can race it in a month down in Texas. We went in and discussed carburetors for a few minutes before he closed up shop for the day. Let's try and clean these up and see how far you gotta to go to clean them up because there's a chance, real good chance at that bore size, there's probably not gonna be any shelf pistons available. And I talked to Vic Ellinger at Wiseco and he said, let me know Monday morning what bore size you need. And he might be able to pull a set and okay. have them done. So I'd really like to try and leave as much meat much. in that bore as you can. Absolutely. Because 4185, that's its last time around the sun. You know uh -huh. what I mean? <laughs> you know, one hole is probably worse than the other. But whatever that hole cleans up at, then... Maybe we can just order a set of pistons to fit that bore. Right. And that way, if something happens and we have to go a little bit bigger later on, we might save one more trip, one more trip on this block and not use it all up in this little goof up, huh? Mm-hmm. Say our prayers, huh? Yes. <laughs> I 
After we got done at Bob's, Vicky and I made it back to the house just about sunset. She wanted to go out to dinner while we were out running around, so I managed to kill two birds with one stone with that trip up to the machine shop this afternoon. Well, what are you up to now? I'm getting the merch pictures ready. Oh, good grief. <laughs> Give me five minutes. You do this every time. I just asked you and you said I could, so five minutes and then come back. You're ready now? I am. Okay. So you had kind of a rough weekend. I had a very rough weekend. I'm sorry. At least your weekend went good. Yeah. I got a really good dinner tonight. <laughs> yeah, we stopped at Watts and Utica and had dinner and then you raided their freaking treat did cabinet. Did you show? What? Show what? The dessert bar. <laughs> did you show that? No, I didn't show any of that. It was really good. Anyway, yeah, so I went with you to take the engine to Bob's and that led to a little detour out to dinner. Funny how that works. Mm -hmm. What do you got to show me tonight, Squirrel? Well, just, um, final reminder because we're in we're inching towards the end of february which mm -hmm. is the tuesday is the last day of february so all purchases each order that you make through tuesday gets you a chance to win the jack's wax bucket full of goodness they may throw some more stuff in because i got to go back in i don't know monday or tuesday mm -hmm. to look at that mustang and that thing is coming out really nice i know and, you know, we're going to throw some extra prizes. We're going to draw more than one one. You know, we're going to have some extras, too. So, like I said, that goes through Tuesday. So. And we could use all the help we could get right now because. Uh, <laughs> You're blowing things up left and right. Uh, oh, I forgot what? to tell them. So, the Gas and Freedom design is now a hoodie. And You've already are, said this. I know, but I wasn't out here to say it. I let you say oh, it. Oh, and it just didn't go over as well <laughs> as it should have. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. I didn't do a good enough job. I'm telling it now. So, yeah. It's All right. A so, this now. design is now in a hoodie, mm -hmm. and it's for pre-order. I already Online. told them, but yeah. we're going to tell them again. Yep. And so, yeah, if that's something that you that's something you could purchase if you wanted to get in for the, for the drawing for Tuesday. That's and it. Uh, help me repair that thing. <laughs> It's terrible. That happened because, like, you were just on a mild little test drive up the road. You weren't even Dude, it getting just, on it. No, it just you, freaking no nitrous. Like, nothing. It, it, I would have thought the carnage that I saw. I would have thought that would have happened on the dyno. Or it, it could have happened anywhere, but or, it just so yeah. happened to happen right up the road, which is a good thing because if I had we trailered that thing clear to mm -hmm. Kentucky, we were about. 12 hours from loading up and going to Kentucky with it. So that would have been a big bummer. That would have sucked a 40 pound leech. What? What's wrong with that? I wasn't sure what you were going to say. Oh. <laughs> I was pre censoring. Sorry. <laughs> Are we done? Yes. 100%? Yes. We'll see everybody next week. Mm -hmm.